Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to From the Desk. Today we're going to talk about pacing. But first and foremost, I want to talk about where I'm at with my writing and upcoming things. Um, right now, as of last week, um, the day, well, it would have been Monday, the day after I recorded last week's From the Desk, I submitted the final on my end. It still has to go through their editing and proofreading at Thunderstorm Books, but the final draft of everything is horrible now. That book is now finally gone off to the publisher. Um, I'm happy with it the way it is. Does that mean they're going to be happy with it? No, but we'll find out when we get there. Um, many thanks again to Gregor Zane, to Sarah Frost, to uh, Thomas Stromquist. Uh, I think that's everybody who read it before. I think that's everybody. If I missed you, I apologize. Um, so that's where I am, with, and I'm working on a new book now, and I have um, another, well, actually I have two more books marinating. So at this point, I have one gone off to the publisher, one that I'm actively editing, one that I'm actively writing, and one that's marinating. Actually, I lied. I haven't started editing yet. I will start editing it today. Anyways, um, come next month, the end of next month, July 25th through the 27th, I'm going to be at uh, Hoover Sci-Fi Fantasy Fest, the Hoover Public Library in Hoover, Alabama. Um, Anthony Vaca was uh, nice enough, I hope I got your last name right, um, was nice enough to invite me. Um, and I will be a vendor, and I'll be speaking on four different panels. Then in October, and this has to go into the From the Desks, that's why I'm not going to give you a time signature so you can jump ahead. This is important. If you are here to find out how to be a, um, a professional, independent author, and how to make money, and how to live off your work, um, I am the reason why I haven't tackled that yet is because I'm doing an hour-long speech at the Hoover Public Library in October, on October 27th, I believe. And I'll be going over everything it takes to actually get to the, how I got to this level, and hopefully how you can try to get to this level. But everybody's different. Um, so, finally getting into the pacing video. Um, pacing is near and dear to my heart because I, that, that's one of the things, that and character dialogue are the two things that I want more than anything else. Like the story can go wherever it wants to go. Um, and that, that's, that's how I feel anyways. Um, it's going to go naturally wherever it goes. The things that I try to hone and work on and sculpt is dialogue and pacing. We've already talked about uh, dialogue, so now we're talking about pacing. Also, this is a request from somebody. If you're watching this, I forgot who you are. Um, I forgot your name. Um, and I don't even remember where you to talk to me about it, whether it be Twitter or whatever, so this one's for you, I apologize. Um, first thing you're going to want to do with pacing is your, well not first thing, but first thing I'm going to talk about is you want to entertain yourself. If at every po if at any point in time you're sitting there, and you're going to bump into this, at any point in time you're sitting there going, I just want to get to the point you are screwing up. You are not doing something right. If you can't even entertain yourself and you're the one writing the story, this is a story you want to tell, then you're not going to entertain anybody else. Now, should you push through in that, that rough draft and get it done and then work on it? Yes. Pacing and dialogue always need to be honed later on. Same with word choice and the narrative. But I think we'll talk about that a little more in some other videos. Um, how to actually do rewrites and whatnot. If you want to see that leave comments. Um, so first, entertain yourself. That's the first topic of this discussion. The next one is, um, because this can't, because pacing cannot be taught, because pacing is subjective, um, I think just about all, every single fantasy novel I've ever read is boring, because they have to tell you so much information to build the world that you're just sitting there, chapter, after chapter after chapter figuring out you know these characters and this world and all this and I'm usually all for character development what I don't care too much about is setting and that's what fantasy novels do they they well the ones I've read anyways um they they're they're boring <laughs> I mean to me so but many people I mean fantasy is a huge genre for a reason they feel that those, you know, the, those books I've read, <laughs> some people say that Terry Goodkind's uh, the, wizard, the Wizard's First Rule moves very quickly. And I couldn't even get past the first hundred pages of it. It was a slog. Um, so, entertaining yourself doesn't mean you're necessarily going to entertain other people, which brings me to actually doing it 
almost almost mathematically. So what I suggest is every single page, on every page there has to be something that moves the plot forward, whether it be a piece of dialogue, a piece of narrative, something that makes the reader feel like they are progressing. Now, that doesn't have to be huge. You don't have to have a twist on every single page. What I'm talking about is just a little something that progresses, something that go makes the reader go, okay, there's some information I didn't have on the last page. That might sound difficult, but if you if you take a huge and this is also how you can break up info dumps if you take a huge piece of information and chop it up and put it throughout a scene or several scenes or however if you take that big info dump and chop it up you can stretch that out that's also that's also a good way to bring your short stories your novelettes your novellas up to novel territory I was asked this on Twitter the other night if you want to that's not necessarily filler um, filler is, you know, play, descriptions of places you're only going to be for a second. Descriptions of people you're never going to see again. That kind of thing. Um, next up, cliffhanger chapters. If you don't want people to put down your book, don't give them an easy place to. This might seem counterintuitive. <laughs> and I, there's probably some readers out there screaming, no, do chapter. I'm not talking about not putting chapters. What I'm talking about is ev every single end of the chapter, you want to end off that chapter with something that makes the reader want to keep on reading. Because if they put, if they want to put your book down, this is a problem. Um, every single, I look at every single chapter, unless uh, something like Sound of Broken Ribs that only has page breaks, I look at every single chapter as a short story. Um, the Betting of Boys, uh, or, or better yet, Bay's End is like this. Every single chapter or subchapter leaves off on a cliffhanger. There's some information on there. I've left some information out, but each and every chapter has a beginning, middle, and an ending, just like a short story. But that ending is always a cliffhanger. Um, next, well, the the last piece of information I want to give you is going back to it was the first or second episode. I can't remember what. I think it was the second. Uh, beta readers, um, because. All of this stuff is subjective. You're going to have to find pre-readers -re who are not going to do editing for you, who are only going to give you advice on how the story progresses, whether or not they are bored, um, whether uh, they're... I have a really exceptional beta reader named Sarah Frost, and I just got one in the most recent one she did, was this is where the story slowed down to a crawl for me. Now, in the book, it was supposed to. Um, there was so much information being thrown out there, it was supposed to slow down for a bit. So I'm, I wasn't too worried about it. But, and Sarah, if you're reading this, thank you. Uh, or watching this, not reading this. If you're watching this, thank you. Um, but the, the, the point I'm trying to make here is you want to, you want to try and garner all the information you can before you put this thing out in pub in the public. Now, with beta readers, one thing you have to you have to find are people with diff differing opinions and differing tastes than you. If you can find somebody who doesn't necessarily like your work, that would be even better. Um, and to an extent, I have that with Sarah. What I mean is, I'm far more supernatural and existentialist and um, that she's she's made comments about how you know that's not her preferred thing where I when I go off on tangents about crazy wacko stuff um, so that's why I send the stuff for her because I know there's a lot of people that don't like that um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I think that's everything with pacing that's how I do it anyways so you want to entertain yourself you want every single page to move the plot forward uh, you want oh I'm sorry I did miss one you want a big event to happen every 30 pages. Um, every 30 pages you want something big, something nat well, something that's natural, I don't want you forcing anything, but some, some big event that not only moves the plot forward, but makes people anxious. You, you want something, whether it be, you know, uh, a, any any genre you can do this with, even romance, you want to throw some kind of drama in there every 30 pages. Um, I think that I think that's every like ten thousand words, roughly, if you're not counting pages. If you do the uh, industry standard, it's roughly I think every uh, every thirty pages is ten thousand words. So every ten thousand words, um, I think that's everything. So um, if you have any questions, leave them down there in the comments below. And until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been from the desk. 
Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.